a little quick update again. I um, uh, in the previous video, if you watched that, um, I was struggling a little bit to get um, the the sign of a sign enter to sort of carry over and carry through with the arguments. And so the example that I was looking at was uh, this branch instruction that takes this this negative number here, sign number. It's also used up here, but you know here it's got a negative value, and we would get a, you know, we we would not get the right value out in the end. Um, anyhow, so I worked through that, and uh, one thing that I did was say, it wrapped up this little sort of uh, help function that we made. Uh, I can uncomment on here um, into a separate function. Could be useful to just have keep that around. Threw most of the other stuff away. Um, and uh, another change that I made, well, a couple of changes that I've made here. First off, I, I fixed up these macros to have a prefix and not just be get. So eventually, and maybe we can do that now, uh, move this into just a separate file so we can use this for, from different source files. And I also devised an update to this kind of uh, instruction encoding naming schema here. So looking at, grab this table, it's almost like I should have this on the screen, it's pretty useful. Um, so I'm gonna paste this in here, so I'm talking through this real brief. Okay, so, so here's a quick refresher, right? This is what the um, instruction layout looks like. It's a fixed 32 bits per instruction. The, uh, the first eight bits is the uh, operation code. And then the remaining bits are divided into arguments. So A, B, C, and D argument. And if D is not needed, there's more space for C, and C is not needed, more space for B, and so on. And when, um, when accessing these, uh, like accessing C as 14 bits or five bits, obviously there's gonna be a difference there if uh, you're dealing with sign integers or not. So the updated, uh, encoding sort of naming schema here is uh, just a letter means that it's a register. Uh, reg in, you know, the value in there names a register, right? So here we have A, B, and that means that, that B, A and B, B here um, names the, the register. So like one for is to one and two for is to two and so on. Um, a K, this is, unchanged since previous videos, that means that B contains a, the number, like the, yeah, the number of a constant, TBD, what that means. Uh, and here are the changes. Uh, so, so BU means that it's an immediate and unsigned integer. This is what I previously called W for white. And that means that in, in this example here with a BU is that this uh, B value here is the entire, uh, it's the entire uh, 19 bits as an unsigned integer. In that case, you know, we could just read this value if you want, it would, it would still work. However, there is a sibling here called a, uh, like BS for signed. And it means that B is an immediate signed integer. And now we care about this, this bit over here, that's gonna be the, the signed bit. Um, and so to make the formatting functions that we have in the, in the implementation file here still, still work nicely, these instruction encoding little schema thingies here have been updated. So looking at the two, the instructions that we've been looking at are mainly this one. Let's just look at this one. They're the same pretty much. Um, it now, it now says here, A, B, S. That means that B in this case is a signed immediate value, which for this instruction is a, a relative number of instructions to jump backwards or forwards. To. So it's a number that is added on to the, uh, the program counter when this is a, occurs. Okay, you remove that. So jumping back here. Um, I want to show you 
where I ended up. So first off, you just hashed out these uh, max values for the wide fields. I still call it wide up here because at this, you know, at this granularity, so to speak, there's no, this doesn't deal with sinus at all. So it's called wide here, but the reminder of the code has been updated to, to say either um, uh, register unsigned or signed. So AR register, AU unsigned, wide, and AS for, um, uh, for the new stuff, right? So, or the new stuff, the, the solution to the problem that I was working on before. So this is essentially where we left off at the end. Um, I just had been making a little mistake, but I found it pretty quickly and cleaned things up. Um, so now, and, and then I've just sort of copy pasted this over here. So what, uh, what, what I do here to get the uh, sign value is first is loaded as the unsigned value is, you know, just access to field load bits. It's the same stuff. And then, Treating the, so this is an unsigned number at this point. This it's AU here and RN up here. It's an unsigned integer. Okay. So then we um, subtract from that half of the maximum value of that field. And then we um, it reinterpret that as a, as a signed integer. Uh, and then we get the correct result. And similarly, there are, I haven't made these, the set operations yet because I didn't use them, but they should be the same as here. So here we have the equivalent of, of setting one of these. Um, so let's say we want to set the, uh, the unsigned value of A, then we just use this make a nothing no qualifier if we want to set a signed integer we use the the as macro here and how this works is essentially the inverse of what what this function up here does or function this code does here right so this takes half of the maximum value and subtracts that right and here we take half of the maximum value same same thing and we add that to it Okay, so that works. And the rest here is just unchanged. I just updated these names here for the new macro names. Uh, these are still the same formatting code. Uh, this is still completely unchanged. And then down here, I've updated these two to use this new, um, these two new macros, right? To make something with a signed immediate value. So three, this is totally unchanged. In the previous video, we fixed a little bug here, off by one bug there. And um, now when we get down here and call the formatting function, the formatting proc, let's just run it a few times here. Um, we see that we now correctly get negative three out instead of an unexpected number as we were getting for. So that's cool uh, that, you know, this is, I think this is just sometimes how it is, where it takes, you know, <laughs> I don't know how many hours it took, three hours, I don't know. I was working through processing the video and stuff like that. Maybe it took, a, maybe it took me two hours or so until to, to work through this, this tiny, seemingly tiny thing, but that's just how it is sometimes, and that's okay. Um, but you know, now we got that. Um, so let's see, what could be a useful thing to do uh, it's getting kind of late here in the day, and I, I think I'm going to just wrap it up pretty soon uh, and call it a day and keep working on it tomorrow. Um, or maybe tonight if I find the find energy, but who knows. Okay, so one thing I want to do is to wrap this up that defines the... We've been looking at this so much, and I think this is going to be useful to access another source files. So to wrap this up into a separate file, it's got to be a separate header file, um, so it's not going to be including the format stuff and as, sec as a second step, we're going to move that to, but we're going to start with all of these instruction kind of helpers. Um, and we'll bring this table with us. So let's, um, let's see. Okay. Let's just, let's just cut this out. 
going to make a new file. We're going to call it maybe inst. Um, we have our inst in here and our op. So this is just this sort of project level header file here, rsm.h. Well, it could be nice to like put everything that has to do with the with the um, instructions into one place, right? I think that could be nice. So, so we're gonna lift this definition into where do I have it? Oh, I named it C. That was not my intention. Put that in here. And we want to grab these things too. I'm not even sure. I don't. Um, well, let's keep it until I if I use it. Appreciate it. And then let's plug these in here. Okay. And actually, the ordering here might be. Might be a little off. I prefer to put, like, I prefer to organize my um, C header files, or or if it's a single C file, whatever. But with, you know, includes obviously at the beginning. Um, so we get we we are actually going to include some stuff. So start with includes, some the age, um, that's the project kind of header file, and then what I like to do is to have any uh, type defs. I can spell. Uh, and after that, so like if there are structs and stuff, right? So uh, struct like lol. lol. Um, I prefer to do it this way and then uh, define the, the, you know, in this example, the lol struct like down here. So there's a couple of structs, there's a couple of type depths. And I'm not. Yeah, I don't have a strong opinion where I put little macros like what we have here now, but um, probably after the, the type definitions. So we're going to plug these in here. And let's put this table at the beginning. Things here, where the instructions start. And we can simplify things a little bit. And the instruction is like, it feels more sensible for that to be at the top. Like code is just code and there's no magic to it, you know, like calling things with a consistent name makes it so that, you know, when I come back to this, this is fine, I'm mind this. So when I come back to this in six months, like I'll find my own things, you know, obviously you forget about stuff. Um, and if anyone else would be crazy enough to dig through this code, it's like also, higher likelihood that you'll understand things if like, you know, wherever it says R inst, that's the file you go to, this is the type you look for. Um, so you just like to keep it kind of straightforward. Uh, uh, uh. So we're gonna go in here. So this is where we cut things out from. Now this is, you know, our build here is just gonna go a little bonkers bananas because, you know, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't know what's happening anymore. So we have to pull that in and say, you know, there's a, um, there's stuff here that you need to grab. Oh, we're gonna say, this is not why it's erroring out, but yeah, yeah, I know if you're a pur purist, you'll be like, oh, you gotta do like, if not tough and stuff, like Pragma ones is supported by the compilers I care about and I like it. Oh, that's good. That's... And I also have this little thing. So this really only has an effect if you use a compiler that um, has like nullability checks and stuff. I'm using Clang right now and it does, so this does have an effect. It's kind of neat. Um, now we don't have any function definitions in this header file, but we do in this one. Um, and so what this does, let's just jump and look at it, um, is that it says, assume that pointer types are Non null, as in if you try to pass a null value to it, that is an unexpected thing. Um, it has two um, effects. 
So I, actually, let me just sketch this out to explain what it means. So let's say we have a, a function foo here, and it takes some uh, lolcat because lolcats are cool, right? As an argument, right? So now if we call foo here with null, like somewhere else, right? Um, like, is this valid? Does is is foo prepared to deal with a, um, a null pointer, right? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Um, and so let's say we have foo one and foo two, right? And foo one here just assumes you know C is is a valid pointer and just goes about his business and does stuff. And foo two here does some some check in its implementation and see if C is null and maybe it just does nothing in that case. Who knows? And so the nullability sort of decorators uh, allows you to say you know non null if C if if this foo one does not handle a null pointer, and for things to do handle a null pointer, you can say nullable. And now when we call foo one, when we call foo one here, the compiler can be like, no, that's not, that's not gonna work, right? It's gonna say, hey, you're trying to you're passing a null pointer to something that doesn't handle null, and uh, and similarly. Uh, if we do this, the compiler can sort of uh, say uh, that this this is totally okay. I guess it wouldn't say that. It would just like not complain, I guess. So this is the this is the example. And this the second thing is if you um, I don't know if if you if you run Clang with the undefined uh, sanitizer, which I have enabled in this project. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if if GCC has anything like that, but. Clang does super helpful, catch a lot of little, little dumb mistakes that I make. Um, it can also catch these things like nullability stuff at runtime, which is kind of neat. Um, so in this uh, in this build script, which generates the uh, let's scroll up my mouse, the generates the 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 build file. Like I see if like if the if the compiler is Clang, then enable a couple of flags that enable these in in the bug mode. Um, so we have the uh, the the nullability, the sanitize, you know, uh, nullability, which I, I'm pretty sure it's part of the undefined sanitizer rather than the address sanitizer. Um, since this is more like a memory sanitizer than address sanitizer, I suppose, but. So a couple of, couple of flags to just kind of uh, kicks that in. Uh, and what's neat about that is that at runtime, even if you do some like cast or whatever, right? If you just like, you say, you know, Foo is like, um, uh, let's see, you would cast this to like, uh, make a parenthesis right here, like, like void, right? Like this. Then the compiler wouldn't be complaining. It would just be like, oh, well, you know, I guess you can, you can pass null to this because you haven't said anything about it, right? And even if you do, you do nullable, right? And it would just think it's totally fine, right? And then at runtime, it wouldn't be. And um, and then I'll build the features of the undefined sanitizer. We'll just cache that for you, which is kind of cool at runtime. Super neat. Comes a little bit about runtime cost, but you know, the debug build, don't care about that. So that's what this guy does. So plug those in here. Uh, just make that a habit to, you know, make sure that this header file, if it's included multiple times, doesn't get, you know, uh, repopulating code. And, uh, that any function definitions beyond this point and you know before this point, which is the end of the file, um, makes it so that if you don't say if you don't say which nullability is for a pointer, it defaults to that it does not accept null, which in imperative cases I think is is uh, what functions do, and so on and so forth. Which means that stuff to do that do uh, uh, accept null, so like the memory allocator stuff, let's see, so we have nullable here, right? So you can use this both for return values and for arguments. So for example, if this function might fail, so this function goes to the OS and it says, hey, give me, you know, um, uh, some amount of virtual memory, um, and it, the OS might just say like, no, or like, I failed or like whatever, right? You get null back. This function, however, just 
just uh, initializes the uh, the RMM structure inside a buffer that the user provided. So this can never fail. This just returns a pointer. And so in this case, the compiler can then insert uh, instrumentation here to make sure both at compile time we can do some checks on the runtime, then we can do some 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 analysis here and make sure that like this never returns null. And if it does, it would just like it would you know it would um, uh, abort essentially like trap whatever print little message print little stack trace if you enable that. And uh, in in this case it wouldn't right if this returns null it would like not do that it would be defined here as being expected. Yeah. So now let's see what uh, what I'm up what I'm messing up here. Okay, so this no longer of course makes any sense because the <laughs> uh, this this uh, type we move this type definition. So let's move that over. So over here, so now we do have a function here, so I guess that was useful. So this is a function to support this. I'm gonna put the functions after the, the macros here. So we have that. I'm gonna save this. Um, of a type constant. It's not just one function. I think we understand what this is. We don't need that. Okay. I'm just gonna clear this and rebuild. Just make sure I can scroll up here. Okay. So unknown type name. Oh yeah. So here we're missing the instruction. Do I call it R? Yeah. Oops. And then oh yeah, this so this uh, enum definition relies on these macros. So we have to put those afterwards. So let's just do that. I'm gonna cut those out that too. I can just undo that. Use that. So I guess there's a compromise and you know you do what you gotta do. Um we can go back this a little bit and just squish these type dots together. Okay. And it works. So now we separated that in set of instructions into separate header. We can use that in different places. So the next thing we can do is to put the formatting code yes, into this um, string formatting file to just keep that stuff separate. Um, and then we can, you know, in the, in the next video, we'll start with a virtual machine to evaluate this program here. And then we can use the space here in our, in our main, in our main program, as sort of like a, this is kind of the working area where we're, we're building things out. And as things are kind of stabilizing and kind of working, we can move them out into a separate source file. I think it's very easy to, um, it probably doesn't seem like it. I probably seem like a total noob on this stuff, but I, you know, I've been programming for, for decades at this point, several decades. And, um, you know, I'm still learning a lot uh, just doing this, I think you've you've seen me learn some stuff, but uh, but I've also learned some stuff that I've that I've been able to um, to memorize uh, or 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 truly learn from. I think, um, and one of them is to try to not optimize like anything too early. And I'm not talking about like performance here necessarily, although that that's maybe obvious. But just sort of like structure, for example, right? If we go over here, uh, I see my my like camera is like struggling a little bit. Is it because there's like a sunspot there or something? I don't know. Well, I guess you're not, you're not looking at my face too much, anyways. Um, maybe I can. Is this a manual focus camera? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't care about what I'm asking it to do. Um, well. This is probably gonna be fun, maybe I can't stop. Okay, well, we'll leave the camera as it is. Okay, so so back to one of the things that I think is kind of important or at least very useful when it comes to organization is um, just keep things like very straightforward and, and simple. And then uh, 
And if you if you look at, you just do this. We can see all the files, right? And this and the source directory here has like fairly few files. The files that are here are files that are contain stuff that is kind of done. And I think this is kind of my point that I'm doing a poor job of explaining. You start out like um, just kind of in a kind of a, in a workspace almost like in, in a single file. Just like do make come up with stuff like make it work. Uh, find the groove, you know. Find sort of like the the shape of the the types and the functions and arguments and stuff like that, and start using them. And after a couple of times you've used them and you haven't needed to change them, like at that point, I think that's when they can like move into their own little unit. Um, like a separate source file. And and also coincidentally, that's usually when they have some, at least that when I have some uh, sense of what the name for it should be, you know, in this case, like, yeah, format kind of works, you know, I just tried it out for a while, and it kind of works. For this stuff, this is a better example, like, started out by just calling this like R op and R inst, and uh, the, you know, there were a couple of different um, different names going around, and at this point, with um, uh, with the with the time spent on this, I think it's pretty obvious that this should just be called like instructions, right, or our inst, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, start you know starting out by like trying to be like, hmm, let's like whiteboard this and see if we're gonna need like this module and that thing and like this source file and you make subdirectories and you make it a bunch of header files ahead of time for things that you will need and try to structure things up ahead, which I've done like so many times and it never really works out. At least it, it is incredibly inefficient and I always end up moving things back and forth. And depending on the programming language you use, there's higher or lower cost to it, right? If you use Go, it's a very low cost for doing that, which I think is, is a really neat property of Go. If you use something like C, as in this case, the cost is like can be somewhat high. Um, especially if you use a lot of header files, right? You might have to go and rewire a lot of includes and stuff like that. If you use something like JavaScript, like every file is gonna have to change it imports and exports and stuff, or imports at least. Anyhow, it's a little, little fun, little fun thing. So I guess we've we've seen me doing that here a little bit, where we've just been working out of this main file here that contains you know the main function. And we've just been spec like trying things out and, and messing with things and then rack wrapping them up into functions like this log bin function and these macros here. And when that works, we're now moving it into its own little, little source file. So let's uh, let's do this with the formatting code as well. So let's move that into um, into this file. And I'm gonna keep this at the bottom. These are just generated code anyways, right? Uh, by, the, by the macros here. So probably won't use any of that. Let's put this at the top. Also, this way, since this is just an internal, like an implementation file, right? If we were ever to want to use this RSM for a different project, you know, in a library style or something like that, um, we we would want to keep the header file like small and we want it to be namespaced. Um, and there's a balance there between, you know, if you if we prefix all of these, right, with, um, uh, with a namespace, then we're taking that cost in like everywhere, right, including here. But this doesn't need to be part of any sort of, you know, um, top level API. So we can just toss them in here, use a short name. It's very nice. Um, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to declare this in a header file somewhere. So I'm gonna take that, so we're gonna save this, save this, and let me run this, this build script again. So yeah, now we can't find that, right? So we're calling that here, and it's like, I don't know what this is. I'm not gonna continue. Um, so let's go in here and just add this uh, function prototype and explain what it does. Uh, formats uh, a an array of instructions IP um, as assembly text to the buff, right? And then since we're using this RA buff that I've talked about before, I actually have, since I've used this so many times, I've made a little template that I can use with functions that just is gonna be dropped in here. It's 
a double combat. So it rates at most, buff cap, blah blah blah. This is just essentially what we talked in the previous video. I was talking a little bit about uh, SN print death from libc. Um, so this just has the same behavior as SN print death essentially. Okay, save that. Uh, it will now find it, but now it will be angry about it because this. Oh gosh, oh this is tricky. So now this, right, our inst is a type defined in here in our inst. So I think what I have to do actually is to uh, to undo this move to move our inst type def into this header file and instead move this back here. Um, I think this is gonna be okay. Um, let's move that to the top and do C our inst.h for details. So to future me who will be confused. Okay, now we have that and we can also clean this up. Then our up is down here. Since we just have one typed up, why not just move this? Okay. Generally, the closer related information is the better. And that goes for things like comments and what they're about to great big things like unit tests and the code tests. I think just uh, the closer things, the closer you can get these things together, just the, the better chance of them like working out when it comes to other people and your future self, it is. So great rule, like as short distance as possible between the related things. Okay, so now we kind of uh, separated that. So if we, if and when we need to expand on our formatter, we can just do that in here. It's a nice little self-contained thing. Um, as we're expanding instructions, uh, we can just do that in this file and it'll be easy to find, but like, you know, and sort of a, a type ahead thing. And our sort of working area here has been cleaned up a little bit. And log bin, this is kind of a helper function. Let's move this. Uh, yeah, let's just move this into format for now. This is probably not the right place, but um, you know, this is one of the nice things with C, I suppose. We can just kind of put this in any implementation file and the linker we just figure out for us. And since we're only using it in this file, we just put the prototype. Um, C, FMT, let's see. My, my editor can just find that for me. So I can just do that and I can find it for me. So I'll just, I'll just do that. Okay, I think we're gonna stop there. Um, we've cleaned things up a bit. Uh, earlier we solved this issue with the uh, assigned immediate values. Um, we've kind of fixed that. Um, we've looked at some uh, ways by which we could, or I talked about at least in some ways we can um, start by um, exploring stuff in kind of a workspace, or start with a single file, as things gradually expand, then put them into functions, like lift the code, put it into a function, or a macro, whatever. And as the function stabilizes, you use that a couple of times, right, still in your working space, move that function into its own dedicated, or set of functions into its own dedicated source file. Um, and that's kind of like one, two, three, is kind of step, step process like that, um, reduces a lot of thrash from trying to just like figure out good names before you even know like what good names are and what the groupings are. Um, cool. Yeah. And tomorrow I'm gonna put together a little, uh, virtual machine to actually execute this, give it some inputs, see what the outputs are. And that's gonna be fun. So, uh, catch you later.